Power GMSA, do you wonder which cleaning products are best for the glass in your home? 12 on your side's Marilyn Mortz explains which window cleaners are best after putting them to the test. Checking Transky, we still have a stalled vehicle 410 at Crossroads. We'll keep an eye on it for you. We're back in a couple of minutes. Good morning, rise and shine for all those kiddos who have to go back to school today, the teachers too. Right now you're starting your day at 43 degrees. Live from ASAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you, it's Wednesday, January 3rd. Thanks for starting your morning with us. We hope you enjoyed your time off for those going back today. We had some big rain in the area late yesterday and into last night. Mike Osterage is here to see how things are shaping up for our back to school Wednesday. Well, we don't have any rain to deal with the, today, but we have a lot of leftover kind of dampness mm -hmm. and some wet roads. And with that, all that moisture out there, it's that damp chill. Yeah, grab a jacket, turn the collar up, and you're going to need it pretty much all day long. Lots of clouds looking off there to the east, and we're at 43 degrees right now, mid 40s in the hill country, 39 Rio Medina. Very consistent temperatures thanks to the cloud cover thanks to the relatively high humidity and with that high humidity we're gonna have to watch out for some patchy fog there's not really much of anything showing up right now but just kind of keep that in mind over the course of the next couple of hours mountain cedar if you are a sufferer at least the good news is it came down a whole bunch less than a third of what it was a couple of days ago when it was 22,000 plus, but it's still on the high side at 6540. Mold is low. The update account is going to come out later on this morning. Temperature is going to stay fairly consistent for the next couple of hours. Again, we'll have to watch out for a patch of fog, some wet spots on the roads from all that rain that we had yesterday, and we will see a little bit of sunshine. Now, the clouds are going to be really stubborn the further east you go. The further west, a bit more sunshine, some warmer temperatures, but with the clouds here in town, that's going to keep us at 56. Yes, a whole lot warmer than yesterday's upper 40s, but still we're going to be anywhere from 6, 7 degrees on average around the area below the normal high temperature. We do see a warming trend coming on in here for the weekend, but another rain chance prior to that. We'll talk all about it. Another front next week. Get that all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority hitting the roads right now. RJ Marquez, what's going on? All right, Mike. Yeah, starting to see some things pick up around the city of San Antonio. We have our first reported crash here. Now, uh, this is off on the frontage road, the eastbound lanes of 410 at Bandera Road. So obviously a very busy area. A lot of people use Bandera and Leon Valley area to kind of go north and south. So this is looking at the eastbound lanes, 410 frontage road. Looks like the turnaround has been blocked off for the moment and you could see that we do have a pretty good backup here in the front of drill but traffic on the main lanes here 410 is moving along take you one more look here what let's see our maps and uh, you can see as you see we our main traffic is still kind of moving through that area but obviously this is a very very busy area to begin with uh, some other things want to let you know about here real quick we still have this stalled 18 wheeler on the eastbound lanes of i-10 at frio this is right before you're going to hit the fine silver curve uh, so something to kind of keep in mind we still have traffic moving through this area as well and something we've been monitoring throughout the morning is this stalled vehicle right here in the gore lane uh, this is the 410 westbound lanes at crossroads right before right before you get to fredericksburg road so uh we saw earlier that there the hazard lights were on Maybe the battery died in this vehicle. We do believe that this is a stranded vehicle at this moment. Uh, traffic still getting through this area, but now, obviously, as you could see, with it still kind of being dark outside, could be a little bit of a dangerous situation there. So if you're headed out 410 westbound, definitely something to keep in mind at Crossroads. We'll continue to follow the latest on the roads and give you more updates as they become available to us. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Now to the border where authorities there encountered around 225,000 migrants over the last month. That breaks a monthly record that stood for more than two decades. Now that surge forced International Bridge One at Eagle Pass to close down back on December 18th. However, senior White House officials now say that all Customs and Border Protection operations resume at that bridge tomorrow as U.S. and Mexican leaders continue to work on solutions to the crisis at the southern border. Meanwhile, a massive delegation is visiting Eagle Pass, and that includes House Speaker Mike Johnson. Our Daniela Ibarra spoke with local business owners who hope this visit actually brings change.
Just two weeks ago, this field behind me was packed with migrants. We're talking at its peak, around 2,400 migrants waiting overnight in this field, sometimes in the cold, waiting to be processed by Border Patrol. Now, right now, this field is empty, and people here in Eagle Pass hope today's visit won't lead to empty promises. I hope they do what you guys are doing, coming, talking to people, asking what's going on, because we vote for them. You know, they, I feel like we need to have our voices heard. It's a simple request. Francisco Hernandez wants elected leaders to listen to Eagle Pass's issues. We need their help to come and see what's going on. What's going on less than a mile away from his Western Wear store is a crisis. A December surge of migrants hit what Eagle Pass leaders call historic levels. Border Patrol shifted its resources to processing, delaying wait times to cross the International Bridge. But people are used to doing three, four hours in line during the holidays. It's the busy time of the year, about 13, 14 hours, and that's ridiculous. That's why I lost a lot of business, because who's going to want to wait in line that long? Hernandez says it's hurting local businesses. My clients from over there did not get to come through the months of November, December, and obviously now January. So I did the numbers. I think I missed out on about 40% of my business. But right now, with the way things are going and the lines that you have, people aren't coming back or coming, not going and coming the way the people here are used to. Jorge Barrera, president of the Eagle Pass Chamber of Commerce, says he expects this issue to continue until leaders step in. It can't just be one person or one group of people. It's got to be the, all, of, all of them together that makes a change. Hernandez hopes this delegation's visit brings meaningful change. If I feel they just come, have a conversation, they see what's going on, and they can probably start putting things into place to make it better for us, because that's what we need. Next week, Eagle Pass is expecting another federal visitor, this time Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. He's expected to meet with Border Patrol leaders and local leaders. As for today's visit, we're going to carry the whole thing live for you. You can watch it on our YouTube page or on KSAT+. Plus. Reporting for GMSA and Eagle Pass, I'm Daniela Ibarra. Staying along the border, the Biden administration is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to allow U.S. Border Patrol agents to cut razor wire at the southern border. If you remember, Texas installed the wire to keep people from coming into the country illegally. Last year, Texas sued to halt the wire removal, claiming that it's a destruction of state property. A federal appeals court recently ordered Border Patrol officials to stop cutting the wire pending court proceedings. That led to the Justice Department to file an emergency application calling for the high court to overturn the decision. The race for the White House continues and former President Donald Trump is holding the lead in Iowa. This after Trump's legal team appealed the decision by Maine Secretary of State saying she had no legal authority to bar him from running. Last month, Maine and Colorado took Trump off the ballot, citing the 14th Amendment, which bars anyone who engaged in insurrection or rebellion from holding office. The Iowa caucuses is less than two weeks away, and Trump still holding a commanding lead in the poll, more than 30 points ahead of his rivals. In other news, an old bomb washed up on the California shoreline days after a heavy surf pounded the coast. It was covered debris, but uh, had that recognizable shape. The Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office bomb squad responded and determined it was an inert military ordinance. The beach where the bomb washed up was among areas evacuated last week as huge waves, some as high as 25 to 30 feet, churned along the West Coast. In November, our KSAT Know My Neighborhood segment concentrated on Alamo Ranch and the issues that families in the area face. One of those issues that families brought up related to law enforcement. Now the Bear County Sheriff's Office is making changes and as Max Massey shows us as part of new initiatives in 2024, Alamo Ranch families, they will see an increase in BCSO presence. Uh, in 2024, we're going to be adding additional uh, districts. Additional districts means means an increased response time, more deputies in the area. Deputy Adam Turbyville has been patrolling Alamo Ranch for more than 10 years. Uh, when I started patrolling out here, it was very uh, secluded, very wooded, a lot of uh, cow pastures, <laughs> a lot of farmland. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, uh, fortunately, it's now as, uh, houses as far as the eye can see. Deputy Turbyville tells me BCSO saw the Know My Neighborhood special and they're responding accordingly. You know, we try our best to keep up with the uh, demand and request for the community uh, on a regular basis. There are changes on the way, but still constant calls for service during the day. We do in the Alamo Ranch area get a uh, lot of requests for traffic enforcement due to the speeding and the racing. 
and then at night. We're looking more for car burglaries, right? Suspicious vehicles, suspicious persons. And these issues, they are not going away on their own. From the months of the end of September to the beginning of December, we had 77 calls for burglaries, right? But that includes burglary of vehicles, uh, burglary of residents, burglary of buildings, anything that has a title burglary attached. We even had one uh, bur burglary of a coin operated machine. And yes, even though families here in Alamo Ranch, they're gonna see more BCSO deputies on the roads. Well, one of the concentrations, it's actually off the streets for 2024 and it's on your phone. It's the digital age, right? It comes with a territory. So now phone numbers can be spoofed, right? We get uh, phone numbers that say San Antonio, Texas, and I answer it. And it's, you know, a, a scammer or telemarketer from overseas, right? With the increase in our technology, we're seeing a huge increase in the varieties and ways that different scams are being perpetrated. Sheriff Javier Salazar tells us senior fraud and scams, there's something that BCSO sees more and more prevalent. And there are new efforts to combat that. But in 2024, BCSO, they're gonna have 50 more deputy positions added, and that can go a long way across the community. We're gonna get an increase of deputies on the streets. In addition to that, we're gonna get an increase of investigators, right? As the population increases, we need a uh, increase in our patrolmen. Max Massey, case at 12 News. 10 minutes past the hour, 43 degrees. New numbers show that streaming services are going down. We're gonna tell you why. People are saying goodbye to Netflix and Hulu. You have to do some cleaning around the house this week. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz tells you which cleaner is best for cleaning glass and leaving it nice and shiny. Let's look out there with live cam. We're starting your day at 43 degrees, nice and cold. Things will, I don't know, warm up a little bit, you know, maybe in the 50s, but we're gonna check in with Mike for all those details coming up. Spots, smudges, grime, glass surfaces show it all. When it comes to cleaning products, you have a lot to choose from. Ammonia-based, ammonia-free, and then there's a homemade vinegar solution. So which works best for clear, streak-free glass? Consumer Reports tested several. I applied toothpaste, oily fingerprints, a mixture of margarine and flour, and bright red lipstick to bathroom mirrors and living room windows. Then I sprayed each one of the different glass cleaners and I counted the number of wipes needed to get rid of the messes. The test cleared up one big misconception. Vinegar should not be your go-to for glass. It worked in our test and it removed our messes, but it did leave noticeable amounts of streaks behind. So it just requires a lot more wiping. Ammonia-based cleaners like Windex are known for their cleaning power, but the smell isn't so great. Plus, ammonia can leave streaks and film. CR found that the ammonia-free options cleaned just as well. The winner? This Sprayway Foaming Glass Cleaner. It cut through the messes and left surfaces dry after a single wipe. And it can be used on chrome tile and porcelain. If you just want a dedicated glass cleaner, CR says this invisible glass is also a great option. As for those hard to reach exterior windows, a telescoping cleaning pole kit available at most home improvement stores is much safer than a ladder. And no matter how you wash your windows, do it on a cloudy day. Direct sunlight can leave streaks. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't either. Mike is nodding his head. Mike did. <laughs> Never use your uh, washers on your windshields if you're in the, in the direct sun either because it will dry it like that and leave streaks. Huh? What, what else did we not know? I don't know. 6 6 16, four, <laughs> 43 degrees. Check in with RJ. Some, some interesting adult hacks there. There you go. <laughs> I like it. Um, good stuff. All right. Uh, taking a look at our roads right now. I 10 at Frio. We're looking at eastbound lanes of I 10. We have still this uh, stalled 18 wheeler. Textot's been on the scene there for a while. Obviously, with these uh, larger vehicles, might take them a little bit longer to clear out. Oh, look, doing some zooming for us there. So this is going to be right before we get to the uh, 35 uh, exit there, right before the uh, fine silver curve. And look at. Look at our guys at TransGuy kind of moving the camera there as we're talking about this. Um, some good news uh, as we take a look here at the rest of the city. We have actually cleared out this crash there, Bandera Road on the uh, Bandera and 410. That was on the eastbound frontage lane. So that has been cleared out. I just saw the cameras there a little while ago. We still have that stalled vehicle there at uh, 410 at Crossroads Boulevard. We'll talk about that a little bit later on if that continues to be an issue there. It's kind of a kind of an interesting situation. But besides that, uh, everything else is looking pretty good across the city. We're going to continue to bring this up as well. We do have some ongoing uh, construction, obviously, in the Broadway area. So we're going to start uh, a new set of construction here for anyone that lives 
uh, works or uh, plays around the Broadway area right now. So we're now going to have closures there going from 6th Street to McCullough, and that's basically in this area right there. So this is the lower Broadway area, and then we're going to have another closure that's going to go from 4th Street to Pecan Street. So kind of a couple of blocks sort of together in this one part stretch of Broadway as they continue to do uh, some pretty extensive work there when it comes to uh, some of the lanes that they're uh, redoing there, also adding some bike lanes as well. But as we all know, this has just kind of been an ongoing issue there for a lot of people that uh, use Broadway to get in and around the downtown area, including ourselves. We know that uh, we've been kind of dealing with this as our stations in the downtown area. So something just keep in mind, these things tend to kind of sneak up on people and they don't uh, they don't realize it. So we're just kind of letting you guys know that these two new areas of Broadway are going to be closed starting today through March of this year. Kind of in our backyard. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, RJ. Mm -hmm. If it is a sunny day, do the west windows in the morning and the east windows in the afternoon. See? <laughs> That's right. Well, you I'm need to write some of this down. Yeah. <laughs> You might need to use your wipers this morning on the bus oh, or yeah. the car. You like that segue? Yes, so, uh, Bundle up because it's that damp chill out there. 45 degrees. Normal low is 41. So we're in the ballpark. But yeah, with all that humidity, it just it conducts the heat away from your body. And that's why it feels so cold on a morning like this. Going to keep a lot of clouds around here. More sunshine off to the west. So it'll be a bit warmer off to the west. But uh, 56 for a high temperature here. Yes, better than yesterday, but still not quite up to par. All right, up there on Timberwood Park yesterday, we got a whole bunch of pictures of this. Yeah, that is a little bit of hail that fell on top of some fairly hefty downpours that were in uh, Timberwood Park. We had those storms that were just training one right on top of the other, and that's why it was pretty common to see two, two and a half, three inches of rain or even more than that in some spots up in the northern portion of Bear County. Right now out there by the airport, obviously lots of clouds hanging around here. Bit more in the way of reduced visibility at Castroville, Stinson four miles right now, seven at Gonzalez. Elsewhere, it's not bad, but the ingredients are definitely in place. We do have a cloud cover, which kind of helps to prevent if you had clear skies and that would allow the, the heat just to radiate out into space and you'd get a lot of more widespread fog, but clouds are kind of helping us out right now. We'll still have to be on the lookout for some of that fog. Yesterday, as we were talking about, it stayed definitely chilly out there. 49 degrees. That's all we could muster of a 12 degrees below, excuse me, 14 degrees below normal today. More sunshine off to the west, so we make it up into the low to mid 60s, but in and around the metropolitan area with the heavier cloud cover, just a limited sunshine. We stay at um, 56 at the airport. And as far as rain chances, we do have another shot of rain coming in here tomorrow going into early Friday. But right now it's looking like this is going to be out of here fairly quickly. Maybe a couple of leftover showers for the morning commute tomorrow, but that moves on out. We clear out nicely throughout the afternoon on Friday. Plenty of sunshine over the weekend. Then we are going to have more clouds building in here late Sunday into Monday. Another chance of rain, even a few thunderstorms. Some could be on the strong side, but the majority of those are going to be well off to the east. Then those are going to be clearing on out and we will have another front move on through here. So that's going to then bring in some cooler air. Humidity is going to be high enough not only this morning, but tomorrow with some of that fog that front moves through here then and that's going to dry things out but we warm up over the weekend and then the humidity comes back up just in time for that next chance of rain on Monday we get the next front moving on through here in behind that that will then pull down some cooler air so here's the uh, the disturbance that moved through and gave us some of the rain yesterday we get a break in the action the next low comes on in here, but again, these things are staying a little too far to the north to really give us. I know there was some hefty rain in Northern Bear County, but widespread heavy rain. These things are staying just too far up to the north. We do get a nice dry spell coming in here for the weekend. We warm up a little bit of a southwesterly flow. Then the next low is developing out there that comes in here for Monday. Again, it stays up there in the northern portion of the state. Not really right on top of us. We will see some of those showers and a couple of storms, but the majority up to the northeast. Then in behind that, that does pull a front down through here, so that'll cool us down for the middle portion of next week. So forecast like this goes like this. Uh, 56 today, tomorrow 45 tomorrow morning as well as Friday morning. Chance of rain overnight tomorrow night 
into early Friday and then start to clear out fairly quickly on Friday. Some sunshine to finish up the day. Front's going to move through here just to get rid of the humidity. It will actually be warmer in behind that front. 65 on Saturday, 68 Sunday, 70 Monday. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms, most of those further to the east and northeast and then back down to 60 for a high temperature on Tuesday. It's looking like a pretty weekend. You know, it's nice. Yeah, it looks like a very pretty weekend. Uh, just under three quarters of an inch rain officially out there at the airport. We are above normal for the year. Oh, I know wow. it's only the third, but we'll take <laughs> we'll it. We'll take, take it. it. Yes. We'll take it and run with it. Thank you, Mike. 622, 43 degrees. Coming up in this morning's GMA First Look, a medical breakthrough is what doctors and the parent of a boy born with a heart defect is calling a procedure he underwent. We're going to tell you more about it now after the break. Five hundred seventy-nine breaths to show them your stuff. Every breath matters. Don't let RSV take your breath away. Protect yourself from RSV with Abrisvo, Pfizer's RSV vaccine. Abrisvo is a vaccine for the prevention of lower respiratory disease from RSV in people 60 years and older. RSV can be serious if you are 60 or older. Having asthma, COPD, diabetes, or heart disease puts you at even higher risk. Abrisvo is not for everyone and may not protect all who receive the vaccine. Don't get Abrisvo if you've had a severe allergic reaction to its ingredients. People with a weakened immune system may have a decreased response to Abrisvo. The most common side effects are tired headache, pain at the injection site, and muscle pain. Ask your pharmacist or doctor about Pfizer's RSV vaccine, Abrisvo. Visit these retailers or find other retailers near you at abrisvo.com. In this morning's GMA First Look, medical breakthrough. The fact that he's pretty much one and done is the most amazing thing. Born with a heart defect, Owen Monroe underwent the groundbreaking procedure in 2022 at just 17 days old. In the first of its kind surgery, arteries and valves from a donated heart were integrated into Owen's heart. Surgeons hoping this partial transplant provides a one-time fix. And this morning, little Owen's parents and physicians speaking out exclusively to GMA. And he was pretty much already out of options. It's terrifying. This seemed to be a very promising procedure, and I presented it to the family, Owen's parents, and they just wanted what was going to be best uh, for their child. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this medical breakthrough yeah. and what it could mean for little heart patients everywhere. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Streaming service use is declining as new data shows more customers are canceling subscriptions. Uh, one quarter of subscribers ditched at least three services in the past two years. Concerns include rising prices and password sharing crackdowns. Elon Musk's company is reporting record sales of more than 484,000 electric vehicles in the last three months of last year. However, Tesla sales were beaten by a Chinese EV maker during that same time period. A classic Tetris first, a 13-year-old boy who plays under the name Blue Scooty is the first human to ever beat the game by reaching its so-called kill screen. He credits up to five hours of practice every single day and a technique that lets him use the controller at a super fast pace. We'll be right back. The rain is out. The chilly weather remains. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, January 3rd. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it's still cold out there, so pack that jacket, especially if you're starting school today. Yeah, and a bunch of people are starting school today. And we say welcome back from the holiday yeah. break, Mike. Yes, indeed. And boy, make sure you bundle up before you step outside because just looking at the numbers doesn't seem that cold. But, you know, when you get all that, that moisture out there, that damp chill just kind of sneaks down the back of your neck. You may want to warm up the car a little bit. We got plenty of clouds out there by the airport. Notice how visibility is pretty good. Uh, we don't have any fog to deal with there, but we're still going to be on the lookout for it because these two numbers are running neck and neck. Temperature 45, dew point temperature 43, a little 
bit of a breeze. And again, in some places there is some fog to uh, to deal with this morning. 40 at Rio Medina, 45 at the airport, 46 right now at Canyon Lake. Visibilities we are have dropped down to maybe four miles at Stinson. Nothing real, real thick, but again, we got to be on the lookout for that over the course of the next couple of hours. Mountain Cedar still very high, but it came down a whole bunch less than a third of what it was just a couple of days ago. Mold is also on the low side. So this morning it's that damp chill, some patchy fog out there, and then throughout the day, mostly cloudy skies. We'll see some more sunshine off to the west, so it is going to be warmer off to the west, but it will stay in the mid 50s here in town. Then tomorrow we're going to be dealing with some fog in the morning again. Then late tomorrow night, early Friday, we will have a couple of showers, even a couple of thunderstorms around here, but I think we're going to be clearing out pretty quickly early on Friday and we've get a front moving on through here. Not a cold front. It'll just dry us out. So behind that we have a good weekend in store. Plenty of sunshine and it is going to be on the warm side. Then another rain chance to start off next week. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. What's going on RJ? All right, Mike. Things starting to pick up out there as we take a look at Transguide right now. We've been following this 18 wheeler. It's been stalled here off to the shoulder. So that's some good news there. I 10 eastbound at Frio. This is right before the 35 exit and actually you're a little bit before the fine silver curve. So you see traffic is getting through there, obviously pretty smoothly for the most part, but uh, Texas has been out there for a little while kind of dealing with uh, this 18 wheeler. We're going to get you back out here. Loop 410 across roads, uh, still seeing this stranded vehicle has been out there for hours. Uh, Loop 410 westbound across roads right before Fredericksburg Road. Uh, so it's right there in the Gore Lane. So uh, we have the two main lanes here. This is basically where 10 and 410 intersect. Uh, so this is right there in the middle of the highway, kind of a dangerous situation as we continue to see traffic kind of building up in this area. But again, hasn't caused any major problems. And so uh, we're going to hope that is going to continue to be the case out there. We do have a crash being reported right now on the westbound lanes of US Highway 90 at uh, Pin Road. So it's going to be around the Lackland Air Force, Bar Air Force Base area. So uh, something to keep in mind for our drivers that are headed out uh, to the far west side. Maybe you're headed out to the Castorville area or headed more closer to uh, 410. Real quick before uh, we get back to Martin Stephanie, just want to mention gas prices here uh, they have actually gone down a little bit so that's good news we we're looking at our average gas price yesterday across San Antonio at 270 we are now down to 266 obviously uh, that's good news there for people that are headed out we have all of our major school districts that are starting back school today and of course people getting back into the swing of things when it comes to work Mark and Stephanie back to you guys thank you RJ top story this morning a man who found his way into a vacant house needed help in getting out from San Antonio firefighters. They had to rescue him after that house went up in flames overnight. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened in the 800 block of South, South San Bernardo, not far from General McMullen. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that the man did suffer injuries. That's right. Firefighters say that he had some burns, some minor burns, as well as smoke inhalation. He was rushed to a hospital. Firefighters did have to pull him out of this house. Now, you see that there are boards on the windows. This is how it originally was, but firefighters say he found his way inside, and they believe he was staying in there when the fire broke out. Let me give you a look at the video from earlier this morning. They got the call after 1.30 this morning, and again, found the man inside, did have to rescue him from this home, which they say was vacant, was supposed to be vacant. Somehow that fire uh, started, it broke out inside again before uh, a little bit after 1.30 this morning. Now, investigators still don't know exactly how it happened or what caused this fire. That part of it is still under investigation, but the man who they did rescue is in the hospital recovering from those injuries. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, ma'am. San Antonio police have arrested a man accused of killing someone over a rent disagreement. 37-year-old Sean Favanka was arrested yesterday for killing 41-year-old David Beck last month. This happened on West Wiesach Avenue near Blanco and Fredericksburg Road. Now, Pavanka's girlfriend was Beck's landlord, and she was trying to evict him. Police say Beck actually won the appeal and planned to show his landlord proof the day he was killed. However, investigators say when Pavanka confronted Beck, Things escalated. Made a fist and like swung towards the towards the victim, uh, stopping inches before his face. The, the victim pulled, you know, stepped back and said, "Hey, take it easy, don't hit me." Both men were armed. Investigators say Pavanka shot Beck, and video evidence showed it was not self-defense. As for Beck, his widow said he was a bartender. 
They also leave behind a four-year-old child and a baby that's on the way. A spokesperson for Harlandale ISD says one of its trustees has now resigned after being arrested over the holiday break. Harlandale ISD says Christine Carrillo submitted her resignation from the board. San Antonio police arrested her for allegedly assaulting a family member. Police say the two got into an argument which escalated into a fight. Investigators said the victim didn't want to press charges. School district called Carrillo's arrest, quote, very unfortunate situation and is discussing next steps to fill her spot. The next Harlandale School Board meeting is coming up on January 10th. This morning, the people responsible for killing Savannah Soto, Matthew Guetta, along with their unborn baby, are still out there somewhere. And now questions are being raised as to why the state alert system used to find missing adults who are believed to be in harm's way was not issued sooner for Savannah Soto. Leon Valley police say they were contacted Friday, December 22nd for a welfare check on Soto and her unborn child. Police say Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Guetta was last seen the day before in a vehicle at their apartment complex. When KSET reached out to police that weekend on Christmas Eve, they were told there was no missing report and there was no cause for concern. On Christmas Day, uh, police issued the clear alert and Leon Valley Police declined our request to go on camera to answer why the clear alert was not issued sooner. Now, Allison Steele, who helped the clear alert become law back in 2019, nearly two years after her daughter, Kaylee Mendotti, was murdered, tells us the goal of the law is to save lives. The goal is to save as many lives as possible by issuing those alerts that can be issued for missing people in real time. Allison Steele explains that there's a list of criteria that has to be met before a clear alert can be issued to the public. You can read more about that on our website at KSET.com. This morning, we're learning more about that airport disaster over in Japan after an investigation was launched shortly afterwards. Plane bursting into flames after crashing into a smaller plane that was on that same runway. ABC's Lionel Muis explains why experts are describing everything that went wrong and everything that went right. This morning, new details on how hundreds of passengers escaped this fiery plane collision in Tokyo. A Japan Airlines plane erupting in flames after landing and crashing into a Japanese Coast Guard plane on the same runway. The tail of the Japan Airlines plane smashing to the ground in the aftermath. Over the past couple of years, we've had numerous instances where airplanes came very close to hitting each other when they moved out on a runway when they weren't supposed to. Flames trailing the Airbus with 300 179 people on board, passengers racing to emergency slides, everyone escaping before the plane was engulfed. Experts say this type of plane is made of special material that stops fire from spreading rapidly. U.S. authorities have warned of an increasing number of close calls at American airports, a shortage of air traffic controllers blamed as one factor in the growing list of near misses. In the U.S., there's been a lot of attention paid to these close calls and these runway incursions, Congress having hearings, but it takes money and it takes technology, flashing lights, ground radar. There are technological fixes. They just aren't being put in place fast enough. Experts are praising the quick evacuation of the Japan Airlines plane with passengers following instructions, leaving their personal items behind. Five of the six crew members on that Coast Guard plane died. They had been delivering aid for earthquake survivors. The investigation will focus in part on communication from the airport control tower to find out why that smaller plane was on the runway. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. 640, 43 degrees. Federal student aid has some new changes and how it's going to be easier to fill out. However, why some people are not happy with the new changes. Traffic and weather coming up, but first, from now on, when you or your child applies for financial aid, things will look a little different. The free application for federal student other aid, otherwise known as FAFSA, determines if and how much money you will get from the government. Filling out these forms in the past may have been difficult, but now the form is easier to fill out. A student um, will go in and say, yes, you can pull any information on file at the IRS for me. And then the parent will also go in and do the same. Not everyone's happy about the changes. Students who have siblings in college used to be able to get more financial aid because of something called the sibling discount. That benefit's gone. Colleges recommend that you finish the form ASAP 
because some aid is first come, first serve. Time now, 645, and a lot more people traveling on the roadway. Let's check back with RJ. Yeah, guys, things got a little bit busy here. Uh, you know what? There was a textile vehicle. We've been following this th throughout the morning. A uh, stranded vehicle out here, Loop 410 westbound at Crossroads. We had a hero truck out there for uh, for a little while, but uh, they have now uh, left this vehicle still stranded there, westbound at Crossroads Lane, right before we get to Fredericksburg. So you see traffic still moving through there, but still a tricky situation. This is actually on the Gore Lane right now, um, and you could see that uh, it's still a little dark out there so uh, definitely take caution if you're headed out in this area the rest of the city things looking pretty good for the most part uh, we do have a crash being reported right now on the westbound lanes of 90 at pin road but doesn't appear to be causing any major delays at the moment we still have our stalled vehicle there i-10 eastbound at uh, frio street and traffic is moving around is moving eastbound there people trying to get into the downtown area so we've been talking about this throughout our entire morning uh, there is a new set of closures there for for people that uh, live or work or spend time around the Broadway area. This is the lower Broadway closures, the downtown area. We're going to see two new closures starting today that are going to run through March of this year. That's going to be 6th Street to McCullough and 4th Street to Pecan. So kind of zoned in on this area right there. Uh, two separate sections that are now going to be closed again through the end of March. And we have our drone 12 footage to just kind of show you went out there yesterday. Show exactly what we're looking at here at Broadway Street. Um, this is an ongoing project there for people that that, uh, are in the Broadway area. So the east and westbound traffic will still be open there at 4th Street, 6th Street, and Brooklyn Avenue. But as far as that uh, north and southbound traffic there on Broadway Street, that will be closed today. 4th Street, basically 6th Street, all the way to Pecan. So just something that a lot of our uh, viewers, a lot of our people that drive around downtown are going to kind of have to contend with businesses as well. Just uh, keep that in mind for the next couple of months. Thanks for the heads up. My hunch with that stall vehicle is, is that Hero Truck tagged it with that white shoe polish that we see on the back window. Right. Yes. Basically yeah. tagged it for a tow. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So it's a matter of time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you, RJ. When was the last time all of the uh, Fiesta parades went down Broadway? It's been oh, more gosh. Like oh, three gosh. Three five? years, something five? like that. Five? No. I don't know. Quite a while. A while. Yeah. yeah. Probably going to be a while, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ain't, ain't going to be this year. No. So. All right. Love this picture. Beautiful little cardinal Aww. there. That is a pretty picture. I know. That's it's like a Christmas nice. card, almost. It, it does look like a Christmas <laughs> card. If only there's some snow around it. We don't need snow around here. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. Out there at the airport, as you can see, first of all, traffic's moving along very well. Road, um, it's probably not damp anymore, given the fact that all the, the cars have kind of, you know, dried things out a little bit, the traffic there. But there may still be a few damp spots here and there. A couple of reduced visibility spots. Not anything too thick. Five miles Castorville, four at Stinson, but just the ingredients are in place. So we have to watch out for a couple of patches of fog. Yeah, some of the low-lying areas, you may run into some of that fog. Temperatures with the cloud cover, with the high humidity, aren't going to be going anywhere for the next couple of hours. We'll deal with some of that fog. And then a little bit of sunshine. Now we're going to see more sunshine off to the west. So it will be warmer off to the west, but clouds are going to hang in here pretty tough in town. So we'll stay at 56 for a high temperature, warmer than yesterday's upper 40s, but still not up to 63, which is the normal high this time of year. Here's the satellite picture and all the rain that we had yesterday moved on out. We still have a lot of leftover clouds hanging around here. A couple of breaks off there to the west. There goes that rainmaker system. The next one is coming in to the west coast. This is going to work its way in here, staying a little bit too far to the north to really do us a lot of good but it will give us some rain tomorrow night into Friday. So here's what long range computer model looks like tomorrow evening. A couple of showers start to develop around here. A few more then in the overnight hours early Friday morning, but notice how the majority of this is well off to the east. Then by Friday morning, we start to clear out in parts of the hill country. That continues to get on out of here, so we'll see sunshine Friday. A front's going to move through here, not cold air, but just drier air. So that clears us out nicely for the weekend. It's going to be actually very warm on the weekend. A few clouds, uh, some high clouds on Sunday and then Monday. The next chance of rain moves on in here and this is going to stick around throughout probably a good chunk of the day. There may be a couple of stronger thunderstorms, but I think once again, the majority of those are going to be further up there to the north. So that's been the problem with these lows that move on through. They're 
staying way up there to the north. We kind of get the little bit of, you know, some stragglers as far as rain, but all the hefty stuff is uh, just beyond arm's reach, unfortunately. Here's what it looks like as far as the, the forecast over the next seven days. We are going to make it up to 56 today. Same thing tomorrow. 45 starting off tomorrow. We're still going to be dealing with some fog around the area again tomorrow. And then those showers develop in the evening hours and Friday we will clear out nicely some uh, probably a wet commute on Friday and we'll see sunshine in the afternoon. Good looking weekend. If you leave your tree up till the 6th till the epiphany, it's going to be good to take uh, decorations down on Saturday, Sunday 68. Another chance of rain on Monday. Very nice weekend. Mm -hmm. We'll take it. Thank you, Mike. Time now is 10 till 44 degrees. And let's look out there with live cam. Speaking of 44 degrees, yeah, pretty cold this morning. Go ahead and pack the jacket and maybe an extra hoodie for school today. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are tracking the storm. New year and a new storm. This one from the west coast to the east coast. And the snow will fall not just in the Sierra and the southern Rockies, but eventually make its way across the nation and bring some snow to the northeast. We will track just how far it gets toward the coast uh, coming up. Also, the investigation into the plane collision in Japan and what the 400 people on board did right that helped everybody escape. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. We're approaching five minutes till seven. And still problems on I-10. Let's check back with RJ. All right, yeah, Stephanie, Mark. Uh, I-10 eastbound at Frio. We've seen this stalled 18-wheeler out there for uh, about a good hour or so, and you can see that it is causing a little bit of a backup there with traffic. This is right before the 35 exit, right before the fine silver curve. So something to keep in mind if you have to head into downtown right now. Kind of an ongoing situation out there. We have at least uh, one of the shoulder there blocked. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. So we do have a developing situation out on the far west side. Uh, we have a reported 18-wheeler crash, and this is going to be at uh, the westbound lanes of 90 at uh, Meckler Road. Sorry about that. Actually, it's Meckler Road, not Meckler Lane. Um, so this is going to be past 211 right before you get to Castorville. So we're being told that there's an 18-wheeler wreck out there, and at least one lane is blocked in the main lane. So traffic's still getting through, but uh, this news just kind of coming into us over the past, uh, I would say, uh, 15 minutes or so. so. Something we'll continue to monitor. Bundle up before you stop outside this morning. There's a lot of humidity out there. It's that damp chill, and as you can see, plenty of clouds hanging around. No problems as far as visibility in this view. Uh, down around Castorville, or over at Castorville, I should say, little bit of reduced visibility. Same thing around Stinson. Fog's not a huge issue. Just kind of keep it in mind. At 45 degrees right now at the airport. Mid-40s all around the area, low to mid-40s, so consistent thanks to that humidity, thanks to the uh, cloud cover out there. And then throughout the day, we are going to make it up to 56. So warmer than yesterday. Today, or I should say not as cool as yesterday, not up to where we should be this time of year. More uh, sunshine, a little bit warmer off in portions of the hill country. And then fog tomorrow morning, some showers late tomorrow night, early Friday. We clear out. Nice looking weekend, bit on the warm side. Another chance of rain Monday. Looks pretty. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.